Welcome. My name is Molly Horseman, and I am a faculty member at the VA Quality Scholars Coordinating Center at the Michael E. DeBakey VA Medical Center. This Methods and Analysis mini-module was developed in conjunction with VAX Methods and Analysis faculty, Dr. Susie Miltner and Dr. Brant Oliver. In this mini-module, we will provide an introduction to the X bar and S statistical process control chart. The X bar and S chart is used for variable or continuous data when there is more than one observation per data point. In this mini-module, we are focusing on statistical process control charts for variable or continuous data. Variable data is quantitative data that uses a measurement scale. Variable data includes clinical measures such as blood glucose and operational measures such as the number of patient visits or hospital length of stay. For variable data, the two most common charts used are the XMR chart and the X bar and S chart. The choice between the XMR chart or X bar and S chart depends on the number of observations that you have for each data point. For the XMR chart, there is only one observation per data point. For the X bar and S chart, there are more than one observations per data point. Imagine you are working on a project to reduce the amount of time admitted patients spend waiting in the emergency room for an inpatient bed to become available. You have multiple patients admitted to the hospital through the emergency room each day. You could look at the wait time for sequential patients and have each data point be a single observation from one patient. In this case, you would use a XMR chart to analyze the data. Alternatively, you could aggregate the data by day and have each data point be the average of the wait times for that day. In this case, there is more than one observation per data point, and the appropriate chart to use would be the X bar and S chart. This table provides a comparison of the XMR and the X bar and S charts. As you recall from the Introduction to Statistical Process Control mini module, the XMR chart consists of two charts the X chart, which plots the data collected, and the moving range, or MR chart. The XMR chart is used when there is one observation per data point. On the X chart, each data point is the individual value of one observation, and the center line is the mean, or average, of all the individual values. The control limits are calculated using the average from the X chart and the average moving range from the moving range chart. The moving range chart is created from the absolute value of the difference between successive data points on the X chart. Now, let's look at an XMR chart to review. This is an example of a XMR chart where the X chart plots the daily fasting glucose measure for a single patient. The X axis is time, in this case days, and the Y axis is the variable of interest. Patients measure their fasting glucose in the morning, which means that there is only one observation per day. The center line, designated as X bar on the chart, is the average of all of the fasting glucose measures. The upper and lower control limits are three sigma deviations from the center line. The moving range, or MR chart, is created from the absolute value of the difference between successive data points on the X chart. For example, the first point on the moving range chart is the absolute value of the difference between the first and second points on the X chart. The second data point on the moving range chart is the absolute value of the difference between the second and third points on the X chart. The average moving range is designated as R bar. The control limits for the X chart and the MR chart are calculated using the average from the X chart, designated as X bar, and the average moving range from the moving range chart designated as R bar. These calculations create straight control limits for the XMR chart. One of the key features of the XMR chart is that it can only be used with sequential data. Because the moving range chart is calculated using the absolute difference between successive data points, the XMR chart must have time order data and cannot be used to analyze cross-sectional data. Reviewing what we learned in the Introduction to Statistical Process Control mini-module, we would analyze this chart by looking at the mean, precision, or range, and the variation type seen in the X chart. The mean fasting glucose is 122, and the range is 38, which is the difference between the highest value, 142, and the lowest value, 104. There are no shifts, trends, or points outside the upper or lower control limits. This means that there is only common cause variation, and that improvement efforts should focus on redesigning the process to improve the mean or increasing the precision of the measure by reducing the range. The X bar and S chart is used when there is more than one observation per data point. The data that is plotted is the average of the observations for each data point, 
and the center line is the average of all of the subgroup averages. One of the key differences between the XMR chart and the X bar and S chart is that the control limits in X bar and S are created using scaling factors, which are designated as the A subscript 3 in the chart. These scaling factors change for each data point depending on the number of observations for that data point. Unlike the MR chart, which plots the moving range, the S chart plots the standard deviation of the observations for each data point. This is an example of an X bar and S chart. On a first glance, it looks very similar to the XMR chart. However, there are several important differences. In this example, each data point represents the average fasting blood glucose per week for a single patient. Thus, the first point on the X chart is actually the average of seven different daily fasting glucose levels collected in week one. The center line of the X chart is the average of all of the data points. The interpretation of the X bar and S chart is similar to the interpretation of the XMR chart. In this example, we can see that there are four special cost signals one point above the upper control limit, and three points below the lower control limit. To guide improvement efforts, you would want to look at those weeks where there were points outside of the control limits and identify any assignable cause for this special cost signal. For those changes that were positive, like the signals in weeks 17, 18, and 24, you would want to replicate and standardize that change. In the bottom S chart, each point is the standard deviation of all the observations for that week. For example, the first point on the S chart is the standard deviation of all the observations for week one. The standard deviation in the S chart is calculated week by week. The center line in the S chart is the average of all of the standard deviations. The control limits in the X bar and S chart are calculated using scaling factors, which are circled in the image. The scaling factors are dependent on the number of observations included in each data point and vary point by point. Because the standard deviation and the scaling factors are calculated point by point, the X bar and S chart has two important distinctions from the XMR chart. First, the X bar and S chart can be used to understand variation in a single system using sequential data, or can be used to compare performance between different systems using cross-sectional data. Second, the X bar and S chart can have uniform or non-uniform control limits. In the example above of the average daily fasting blood glucose per week, each data point has seven observations, which means that the scaling factors are the same for each data point and the control limits are linear. In this example, you can see in the chart at the bottom that the number of observations varies for each data point, with each data point having between five to 15 observations. In this case, the scaling factors vary for each data point, which creates non-uniform or non-linear control limits. The rules for detecting special cost signals are similar in XMR and X bar and S. Here we are presenting the detection rules used by the Institute of Healthcare Improvement, which can be found in the Healthcare Data Guide. These detection rules are just one option among several different sets of detection rules that you can choose from. The choice of detection rule depends on trade-offs between type 1 and type 2 error, which will be covered in future mini-modules. For sequential data, the rules for detecting special cost signals are the same for XMR and X bar and S charts. Shifts, trends, and a single point outside of the upper or lower control limits all indicates that there is special cause variation. For cross-sectional data, the data points represent data from different facilities, units, or clinics that are all collected at the same time. Therefore, we cannot use the detection rules for shifts and trends because the data does not consist of consecutive points. For the analysis of cross-sectional data with the X bar and S chart, the only rule for detecting special cause variation is a single point outside of the upper or lower control limits. Monitoring improvement data using statistical process control charts enables us to understand variation in our system and should guide our improvement efforts. Special cause variation means that the system performance is unpredictable teams should work to identify assignable causes for changes in system performance. If the system performance is desirable, teams will work to maximize, optimize, replicate, or standardize the change. If the system performance is undesirable, teams will work to minimize or eliminate the change. Subsequently, systems may move into a phase where there is common cause variation, and the near future performance of the system is predictable. However, just because the performance is predictable, it does not mean that the performance is desirable. 
If there's too much variation, the team may work to make the process more reliable. If the mean performance is not optimal, the team may redesign the process to get a better result. In either case, these changes may result in a new special cause variation and the cycle would continue.